My name is Linda Christian. I've got a secret. Do you think you can guess what it is? Arid Cream Deodorant. The deodorant that is 53% more effective in keeping underarms dry and odorless presents I've Got a Secret starring Gary Moore. Well, now, greetings, greetings to you, my friends. Real nice to be back with you again. This is another edition of I've Got a Secret, which is the new television game that tells the awful truth about some very nice people just for fun. Tonight, we have some interesting information about the private lives of some interesting folk. Information that they're going to try to keep secret from our panel of nosy parkers. Now, let's meet our panel. First of all, the bright young television personality, Mr. Bill Cullen. Then the lovely motion picture and television actress, Miss Jane Meadows. And one of the truly fine comedy actors of America, Mr. Eddie Bracken. And our bright star of movies and the theater, the newest member of our panel, Miss Kitty Carlisle. That is our panel. <laughs> and they look pretty bright tonight. Now, in just a moment, I'm going to introduce you to a lady with tonight's first... All right, let's get playing on our game called I've Got a Secret. How about you, panel? You all ready to go? Ready. Yeah. Our yep. first contestant has been standing off stage for the last moments, making signs to me like she's got butterflies in her stomach. So let's get her on here and get her working. Our first contestant for the evening. Hello. How are you? Now, don't worry, this makes you a little nervous the first way. After the first few minutes, uh, you have a complete nervous breakdown. <laughs> Will you tell the panel what your name is, please, and where you're from? Mary Hartridge. Long Island City. From Long Island City. All right, now, Mrs. Hertwich has a secret, and here's how we play the game. Each panelist will get two questioning periods of 15 seconds each, but the clock will only time the actual questions. That means we take time out for audience response and for discussion. Now, when a panelist's time is up, he will hear this sound, and I will pay our guest $10 and turn the game over to the next questioner. Twice around the panel for a total loss of $80, and the game is kaput. Now, Mrs. Hertwich... Is it Hertrick or Hertrich? Hertrich. Miss Hertrich, if you will whisper your secret to me, we will reveal it at the same time to the folks at home. <laughs> well? Definitely. <laughs> Sounds like a very elevating experience. <laughs> All right, panel, I will tell you only this, that it concerns an experience that she had, and Miss Carlisle, to get you right into the swim, we'll start with you. Did this experience happen to you out of doors? Um, no. Did it happen to you in a house? No. Did it happen to you in a public place like Grand Central Station? Yes. Uh, like Grand Central Station, in the sense that it was not a private residence. Uh-huh. Well, was it uh, in a store? Yes. Was it... Um, let me see. Long Island City. Um, was it a supermarket? No. Did it happen to you in a laundromat? No. <laughs> <laughs> Did it happen to you in a department store? Yes. Did it happen to you in a big department store? We'd have to say it was a rather large department store, I think. Yes. All right, there's $10 down and $70 to go. Mr. Bill Cullen, please. This happened in a department store, right? Did uh, this... Uh, whatever it was happened to you, did it happen to everyone in a department store at the same time? No. <laughs> no, Mr. Cullen, and just as well, too. <laughs> did you get some sort of an unusual bargain, by the way? <laughs> well, I don't think we can really classify it as an unusual bargain. She paid a certain price for it. <laughs> On the basis of that, then, did you go there perhaps to have some sort of a complaint adjusted or... Uh... <laughs> did this happen in a revolving door of the department store? No. I once got my finger cut in a revolving door. Was this, was this around Christmas time or anything like that, Mary? Yes. Uh, did, did the store Santa Claus have anything to do with uh, this? <laughs> There's $20 down and $60 to go. I didn't know it was a Christmas time myself. All right, uh, Miss Jane Meadows, please. Mrs. Hertridge, if I were to go to this department store tomorrow in Long Island City, would this happen to me? <laughs> no. 
this something that doesn't normally happen in a department store? Oh, I, I wouldn't. I, I think it's hardly normal. <laughs> it doesn't normally happen. Was this a big event in your life by any chance? Yes. Were you born in a department store? No. <laughs> Were you married in a department store? No. Did you have a baby in a department store? Yes, yes. she did. Well, now, wait a moment. We have Were they on sale? <laughs> no, she just went because she heard they had free delivery. <laughs> Uh, I remember it now. It was in Macy's. That's right. And you had a baby in the ladies' room. Almost. That's right. Yeah. Really? Well, this is probably as convenient a place to have it as I mean. But, uh, now, look, I tell you, this was, Macy's was so overwhelmed by this happy event that happened on their premises that they, uh, oh, th let me see. It happened on uh, December the 11th, isn't that right? Okay. You had gone shopping, I presume. Right. I mean, I, didn't, I assume that you didn't go down there for this purpose. No. <laughs> Uh, and she <laughs> named the child Anne Macy Hertrich, and Macy was so overwhelmed by it that uh, just about a month later, not quite a month later, on New Year's, they took this very cute ad that you might remember from the uh, papers. We have a close-up of it. Can we look at it? It says, Anne Macy Hertrich, born December 11th, 1951 at Macy's. For the sake of all the young in the world, may 1952 be a year of hope, happiness, and peace. And that we make well wish for all the babies in 1953. Thank you from the makers of our Thank you. <laughs> now then, let's welcome the next gentleman. Who I've got to see. How do you do? How do you do? Will you tell us, sir, please, what your, your name is and where you're from? I'm uh, John W. Travis from Hyattsville, Maryland. Hyattsville, Maryland. All right. Now, panel, you remember how we play the game twice around the panel and the game is lost. Mr. Travis, if you'll tell me your secret, the folks at home would like to know it, too. <laughs> really? <laughs> I probably shouldn't say this, but well, from what little I've heard, I didn't know that anybody had. <laughs> I will tell you only this, panel, that this concerns something that Mr. Travis did, and we'll start the cross-examination in this case with Eddie Bracken. Are you proud of this, what you did? Oh, yes. Uh, did it cause any suffering or pain to... <laughs> no. Did it benefit humanity in any way? <laughs> uh, I think it'd be stretching a point to say that it benefited humanity. Uh, it would be stretching a point. Yes, I can. I we must I say no. In other words, it's neither here nor there. Uh, you know? Well, that's only a matter of opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Does, uh, uh, is anyone else involved uh, in what he did? Yes. Would this person be famous? Yes. The answer to that is yes. There's $10 down and $70 to go. Miss Kitty Carlisle, please. Uh, would it help us to know who this person was? Yes. Is this person in public life? Yes. In political public life? Yes. Involved in the present campaign? No. He's involved. Oh, yes. He's involved. I think yes, he's yes. involved in the present. He is involved. Yes. Not, not as a candidate? No. No. Uh, is he a sort of behind-the-scenes advisor? <laughs> he could be. There's $20 down and $60 to go. Mr. Bill Cullen, please. Does this man at the present time hold office here in the United States? Yes. Is it a relatively uh, high, high office? <laughs> yes. Is it, uh, by any chance, President of the United States? Yes. Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in other words, this thing that you did had to do with President Tru Truman, that's, is that right? That's correct. Uh, you didn't teach Margaret to sing by any chance. Did you? No. Now, do you think I would have said what I had said if he had? What'd you say? I uh, this thing you did was it a service you performed for President Truman? Right. Uh, and was... there's thirty dollars down and fifty dollars to go. Sorry, Mr. Cullen. Miss Jane Meadows, Mr. please. Mr. Travis, this service that you performed for President Truman, did you perform it uh, to help him in a political way? No. Is it connected with a business of some kind? Is it something, is it your business that you did for him? Yes. Would it have anything to do with music? Could be, yes. Would it have anything to do with a piano? Yes. Did you sell him a piano? No. 
Did you teach him to play the piano? No. Did you tune his piano? Yes, I did. Well, now, Mr. Travis only made $30 from Ari tonight for tuning President Truman's piano, but that's more than you made when you tuned the piano. Then why does he play off key all the time? <laughs> Now listen, will you explain to, to our panel how, uh, how it happened that you, uh, that you tuned his piano? Uh, yes, I was in the Navy, and uh, uh, the, the, the piano tuning was done aboard the yacht Williamsburg when he would uh, take his trips down the river. And uh, <laughs> my job was tuner for the Navy School of Music, and uh, my officer in charge sent me over to tune the piano uh, when it was to be used Mr. for that purpose. Mr. Travis told me before the show, too, that the four hours during his entire uh, uh, time in the Navy, the four hours he spent aboard the Williamsburg constituted his entire sea duty. <laughs> <laughs> and he went on later to tune Margaret Ciano as well as Vladimir Horowitz and a few dozen other people like Arturo Rubenstein. I mean, Arturo Rubenstein. So the man must be pretty good. Yeah. Thanks so much for making this about. All right, now, panel, it is time for you to go to work on tonight's special guest. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely movie star, wife of that fortunate man, Mr. Tyrone Power, and other than the lovely Miss Linda Christian. Well, now, don't you look pretty. You have a secret for our panel, huh? Yes. You didn't become a mother in Macy's department <laughs> store by any chance. We were talking about her wonderful <coughs> child just before the show. All right, now let's see here. Uh, we, let's see how quickly you can expose uh, her secret. We'll play the game as before, except that the money, of course, in this case, will go to Miss Christian's favorite charity. Now, if you will tell me what your secret is, please, we'll show it to the folks at home. <laughs> All right. Now, this comes as something of a surprise. We'll start with Bill Cullum. And I can only tell you that this concerns something that she received. Uh, this thing that you received, uh, Linda, it, did you, it was it an award of some kind for a performance uh, of yours? No, it wasn't. Was it? Did you get it from, uh, did you get it from a fan of yours? Not exactly, no. Oh, don't tell me. <laughs> no, well. Um, excuse, excuse us, just a moment here. Oh, it'll take a lot of time, oh. yeah. I'll see you in Macy's. <laughs> We're going to say yes on that. She did receive it from a fan of hers, yes. But not exactly a fan. Was this fan uh, that you received this from possibly a fellow who does rather well in the movies uh, by the name of uh, uh, Power, I believe it is, isn't it? Did you get this from Ty? Yes. I was calling him Ty because I never met him. Uh, <laughs> uh, I hobnob with all the stars, you know. Uh, this, this thing that... Uh, uh, that Ty gave you is it the sort of a thing that uh, I could give to my wife, for instance? <laughs> could. You could. That poses a problem because I never give my wife anything. <laughs> uh, this thing that uh, you did get, get from Ty, does it come uh, in its final form, does it come in rather close or intimate contact with the body? Yes. Then would it be proper or nice for a single fella to give this thing to his girl? No, no, I don't think so. Does a woman usually get a lot of these given to her for her honeymoon? <laughs> <laughs> None that Miss Christian and I know about, no. There's $10 down and $70 to go. Miss Jane Meadows, please. Linda, is this thing that you receive an inanimate object? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. Uh, you may hate me after the show, but yeah, we'll say yes. It, it, it is an inanimate object. It is. Is it something that's worn? <laughs> yeah. uh, how do you mean worn, Miss Meadows? Well, I mean like a fur or jewelry. In the sense of an adornment, something that you put on, no. No. Is it something uh, <laughs> that I could hold in my hand? Is it small enough? <laughs> I don't think so. No. Gee, this is getting murder, isn't it? <laughs> we'll say no on that, no. Is it very large? <laughs> no. Is it very valuable? Uh, no, I wouldn't get... No. I wouldn't give Not a nickel really. for it. No. <laughs> you can't make up your mind on anything. <laughs> it isn't valuable and it isn't very large. It's no. medium-sized. Is it something that you would keep in the house? 
<laughs> if you could, you would. <laughs> That's very good. If you could, you would. Yes. $20 down and $60 to go, Mr. Eddie Bracken. Was it a tie that Ty gave you? <laughs> no. Well, I'd better go home now. Uh, was it that beautiful Howard Greer dress you have on? I'm sure it's a Howard Greer. No, it's a Fontana. It is. Somebody is copying somebody. Uh, is it something that you wear like that? Is it, is it a, a, a gown or a dress or anything of that nature? No. Is it jewelry? No. Uh, it wouldn't be earrings, a necklace, or a bracelet. Um, no. No. <laughs> uh, is it something that you would wear on your hair? Uh. No, I hardly think so. Thirty dollars <laughs> down, fifty dollars to go, Miss Kitty Carlisle. Linda, this is something Ty did to you. Um. Well. Received. Yes. 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 Did he do it to you above the waist? Uh, yes. Yes. Well, now, you got on a new haircut. Did he cut your hair? No. <laughs> <laughs> he did it to you above the waist? Uh-huh. Um, did he do it to you outdoors? Uh, no, he wasn't. No. He did it to you in the house? Mm-hmm. Did he do it to you in sort of the bedroom? <laughs> I mean, would you have to be in a private place to uh, do it? I must uh, take the curse off that. It happened under the circumstances that it was, yes. Forty dollars down and forty dollars to go. Panel, this is your this is your last chance around. Mr. Bill Cullen, please. This thing that Ty gave to you, was it to celebrate some happy occasion? <laughs> it wasn't. Is it the type of thing that you could possibly present to someone uh, to make them happier, or is it the type of thing that when you present it to them is going to make them unhappier? Well, no. No, I don't know. Well, he asked two questions. Yeah, uh, I'm no, sorry. it's going to make him. It would, it would not make him happy, Mr. Cullen. It would not make him happy. Is it the kind of thing that you would prefer not to give to someone you uh, cared very much for? Uh, yeah, yes. Thing I can think of is scarlet fever. <laughs> uh, is this something that you caught from Ty? Yes. <laughs> I think we're being a little devious there. Uh, did I you did? mean? Huh? I did. But well, well, how, how did you mean caught, Mr. Cullen, please? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now you made me change the whole. All right, Too late. Uh, yeah. Fifty dollars down and thirty dollars to go, Miss Jane. Mellon. I am completely confused. Linda. <laughs> I, I thought this was an inanimate object that Ty gave you. That's right, Jane. But then we established that it was something that he did to you from the waist up. Mm-hmm. Yes. It all comes out even, you'll find out. <laughs> Is it something in the way of a hug or a kiss that he gave you? No, not exactly. No. Something that you wouldn't like to do to somebody you mm. said that you love. That's right. Is it uh, going away, saying goodbye, or something no. like that? No. At the time, she wished he had. $60 down and $20 to go, Mr. Eddie Bracken, please. Yes. Would I be happy if I gave this to you? No, I don't think so. Really? <laughs> no. <laughs> is it animate? Huh? What's Does it, it move? It, uh, 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 the, the thing itself, no. No. Uh, is, it, is it an animal? No, it isn't. Uh, is it uh, made out of uh, a cloth? No. Is it made out of... Uh, was it in a package when you received no. it? No. <laughs> There's $70 down and $10 okay. to go. This is the panel's last chance. Kitty Carlisle, it's up to you. Did he use part of his body when he gave it to you? Yes. Did he use his hand? Yes. That's right. And he handed something into your hand? No. No. He put his hands on you? Mm, yes. yes. In order to do this? Yes. yes. Um, it had nothing to do with anything like beauty treatments or cutting <laughs> of hair. <laughs> The panel has gone down the ignominious <laughs> defeat. Eighty dollars has been lost to Miss Christian. Will you tell them what it was that your husband gave you? Well, you see, my husband gave me a black eye, but he's a very bad sleeper and very restless. And well, more power to it. <laughs> <laughs> to have caught Miss Christian in New York. This is not her native habitat. She came here, as many of you know out there, for the premiere, world premiere of her new picture, The Happy Time, which is showing at Radio City Music Hall. How do you like the picture yourself? The critics liked it. Well, I hate to say this. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll get you a couple of tickets after a while. Huh? Thanks so much, okay. Marriott, for having been with us. It was bye just bye. great. Bye-bye.
And now, quite hurriedly, let's greet our next contestant, because we have only two and a half minutes left. Will you come in, sir? My next contestant? <laughs> Hello, how are you? Sit right down, sir, please. Will you tell us, please, what your name is and where you live, sir? Nelson Trindle, Marshfield, Massachusetts. Nelson Trindle from Massachusetts. Now, pal, uh, I'm going to have Mr. Trindle uh, give me his secret at the same time we will reveal it to the folks out there. Will you tell me what it is? <laughs> Let it smile when you say that. All right, I will only tell you this, panel. Uh, it is something that the gentleman made. And we will start the questioning with Jane Meadows. Something that you made, Mr. Trindle? Yes. This thing that you made, was it a large thing? No, not in the sense. Would I be able to hold it in my hand? I think so. I could. Is it valuable? Well, that depends. That depends. Well, well, I, I, I think it's a value. It's a, it's, it, it has a very definite value. It does. It does. Uh, would I be interested to know when you made it? At what time in your life? Possibly. Did you make it when you were a young boy? No. <clears throat> did you make it recently? Uh, within... Five years, let's say? Yes. You did. Is it uh, utilitarian? Yes, it's, yes. it's a very useful article. Ten dollars down and seventy dollars to go. Mr. Eddie Bracken, please. Would you use this article indoors, mostly? You could. Would you use it outdoors? Yes. Uh, is it, uh, would it help us to know what it's made of, what material? I think it would, don't you, sir? Yes. Is it of a wooden article? No. Uh, <clears throat> a, a silver uh, or a, a nor of some kind? No. Um, is it made from cloth? No. Oh, Animal? No. 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 I'm sorry, your time is up. There's $20 down and $60 to go. Field. Miss Kitty Carlisle, please. Is it vegetable? No. No. It's not animal, vegetable, or mineral? It's got to be one of them, doesn't it's gotta it? It's got to be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's mineral, then, I suppose. Huh? Mineral, yes. It's mineral. I'm sorry, panel. We're fresh out of time. I'm going to have to cut you off, which means that we forfeit our entire $80 to Dr. Trindle, who is a dentist and who was clever enough to make his own teeth. Smile at the panel with your own teeth. Huh? Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, now, my friends, that's all the time we have for our guests and for their secrets tonight. In just a moment, I will tell you about the famous celebrity who will be third degree by our panel on next week. Panel and I are having a wild discussion as to whether a black eye is animate or inanimate. I suspected at the time it is animal. I don't know whether it's animate. It doesn't move around unless you move. But we'll fight it out after the show. Huh? <laughs> Next week at the same time, uh, our panel are going to do their best to discover the secret which is being kept by that fine gentleman, Mr. Barry Fitzgerald. There will be other interesting people to challenge our experts with their secrets, too. And now may I say goodbye to a slightly disgruntled uh, uh, panel, Mr. Bill Cullen, Jane Meadows, Eddie Bracken, and Kitty Carlisle. Until we all meet here next week, then, this will be Gary Moore saying bye-bye. <laughs>